Hey, welcome to the next episode of Kicking It With Kahu. This is a series all about esports where we catch up with people from all walks of the esports industry. This time around, we caught up with the coach of the Direwolves Rocket League team, Five. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be a coach or how somebody gets in that position, then just stay tuned while I kick it with Five. Hello, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you please introduce yourself, tell us what's your name, where are you based, um, what's your age? Tell us all about you, please. Yeah, uh, I am Sean, also known as Vive. I'm 25 from Melbourne. Uh, I moved here in 2005 from Glasgow, Scotland. Cool, now you are the coach of the really, really fun game Rocket League. Can you please give us a little bit of a timeline of how you got there? So your key moments in terms of how you started playing Rocket League and then anything in between that got you to being a coach of a Rocket League team? When the game came out, my mate was on computer. I was on Xbox, so he had it for maybe a month or two before I did. Um, so he introduced me to Rocket League when it came out on Xbox, because he was all over it on computer. Um, so I had a group of eight, 10 friends that were all just constantly playing together, getting to love the game. Um, and I haven't stopped since release, really. Uh, I played it very casually until 2017. And I went to Scotland for six months to spend time with family. And that's when I really got hooked on it, playing over there. I was already in a few stream communities, so I was playing with a lot of American friends at the time. Um, and yeah, my love just for the game just absolutely went to the moon. And I came back from Scotland in 2018 and just committed fully to competing. Uh, I got into, at the time it was the Jam Gaming roster. Uh, I was the sub for Bango and Snarf Snarf on that team. Eventually things happened in the background and I got picked up to core, made the season six league play. And then after that, things kind of went quiet for a bit and I started coaching just friends here and there and it just kind of picked up. Eventually got to a point where I had people asking me to coach their team as well as other teams. And then it kind of, I just got hard locked into coaching i enjoyed it it was fun helping people and yeah here we are coaching die wolves and i've been with fiber for over two years now so it's been fun can you tell us what are some of the notable achievements that your team has achieved while you've been coached the most recent one's definitely been that winter split regional one that was six weeks ago uh, winning that was our first rocs win so that was a extremely hype moment for all of us that was two years in the making congratulations so you, you were you started as a player and then you eventually became a coach what does the role of being a coach entail and how do you compare it to being a player? I prefer coaching, that's just me personally. I've always been someone that prefers helping people achieve their goals. Playing is obviously you have to commit a lot more time to the game because you've got to hone your own skills as well as work with the team and put in those extra hours inside and outside of the team efforts. Coaching, it's more just keeping players in line, making sure they know where their mistakes are, making sure they don't slack off, don't get too comfortable, uh, reeling them in when they have to because it's just as easy to get lost in the chaos and getting frustrated or just overwhelmingly relaxed as keeping that middle ground of being serious but enjoying it. Um, and then just making sure the players aren't completely out of line when it's becoming a point where it's impacting the team as a whole, basically. Now you say you quite like helping people. I feel like that translates well into Rocket League because in a lot of it, you, you're setting people up to get a goal. Do you feel like somebody's personality translates to how they play in a game? Yeah, I feel like it does. I feel like a lot of people, are, if you're more willing to be flexible as a person, you're more willing to be flexible in a role on a team. So if you've got that person that wants to just be the highlight and wants someone to just look at them all the time, you can normally tell by their play style in the game. If someone's big and flashy in game, they've normally got a big personality out of it. I mean, it's not always that way. You get the flashy players who are just quiet, humble, just want to grind and do their thing. But I'd say a lot of the time you can tell that difference in someone's personality based on how they play for sure. I imagine um, your personality also shows through being a coach. What is your personal approach to the co coaching role? For me, it's just making sure I'm available. Uh, a lot of coaches I know of, every hour of every practice with teams, they kind of pick and choose their moments where I'm, I try to make sure I'm there for the guys. Even if it's just in call watching them in practice, I'm just available to help when they want me or when they need me. Uh, obviously outside of game day, it's up to them almost when I'm here and when I'm not. I'm pretty much available all the time given lockdown restrictions, uh, especially during the week around work. I'm pretty much on with them in there, just making sure everyone's still on track. Uh, all it takes is a week and it can take 
a month to get back on. So I'm trying to keep on top of things. Did you go to university or are you at university? I did. I graduated my Bachelor of Business and Sport Management June, July last year. Well, that's a bit of an appropriate degree for what you're doing right now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, what advice would you give to other people who are wanting to cross over the university degree with eSports? It's all about time management. So for me, I was fortunate enough to get to do my degree online. So I was pretty much completely flexible around my own schedule. Uh, it, I was part time for half of it. I was full time for half of it online. I could do and pick and choose how I wanted to do my course. Um, people on campus is obviously there's a lot more time restrictions. You have to spend more time on campus. You have to spend more time traveling to and from. It's definitely something you have to be extremely strict on your time management to be as efficient as you can. Uh, but it's definitely doable. I don't see why anyone wouldn't be able to do professional gaming and university at the same time. Can you please tell me what are your thoughts on the local Rocket League scene? The Oceania Rocket League scene's very small in comparison to the bigger regions like EU and NA. Uh, I feel like that's every esports like that. Oceania is just a lot smaller. Uh, so the player base is a lot more tight knit, I'd say, where everyone knows everyone over here. If you're in that top, top six, top eight, there's no new players that are just like, who on earth is this guy? Everyone knows everyone, whether it be from competing or just ranked. You want, it's extremely rare at the top scene to see anyone just be like, who on earth are you? So it's good, but it's small because you know everyone. It does kind of keep people in line in that sense, but it would be nice to be in a bigger region where there's more kind of in and out of, like potential, I guess. Since you know everybody, could you answer the question of what is the average age of the Rocket League player? Average age? I believe it's, I estimate 19. I feel like if you'd ask, like it's just gone up steadily. I feel like a lot of the people who still play it now played it from release. Yes, there are more young people coming in, but I'd say the average age would be for kind of high teens, just from experience. What do you think players and organisations within OCE need to do to help grow Rocket League here? Um, for players, I'd love to see a lot more content. It's almost not touched in the OCE scene. It's something that's pretty major, especially in North America. A lot of the players there are just so massive on content. Uh, I'd love to see more players locally do it. I don't know how much that would impact the local scene. I'd say more things like grassroots tournaments, but that's more of a, not even organizational standpoint, that's just, I, the grassroots scene is just not developed in terms of like locally. And I feel like that's something that could do with a lot more work. But who would do that? Players, organizations? I've got no idea. Maybe a bit of collaboration between both. Yeah, that would probably help. Now, speaking of content, I recently saw a video of somebody playing a Rocket League-like game on VR. Do you think Rocket League could ever be viable playing on VR? No, not personally, no. I feel like it would be a completely different game. Uh, same as Rocket League on mobile is a completely different game. Like, you, like you're sure you can sell it, but playing Rocket League in VR would be first person and the stuff you do with a car would just give you a headache. I couldn't see someone doing it legitimately, no. I did actually feel a little bit sick after watching that video, so... Yeah. Um, now, do you guys play with a controller? Is that correct? Majority do, yes. Some people do play keyboard master. I imagine controller might be a bit easier though, wouldn't it? Yes and no. I, a lot of people prefer playing controller. Like, there's still some extremely top tier, like high level players that play keyboard and mouse. There is a, the advantages to both. It just kind of comes down to what the person wants to grind their hours into, I guess. So I think we can agree, though, that both keyboard and mouse would be better than VR. Oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, can you please share a couple of highlights um, of your career? Player, I only had for one season, so it was definitely RLCS Season 6. Just qualifying for that was a good feeling. And then Gfinity AU back in 2018. They did VR LAN series where we flew out to Sydney. It was I got absolutely blown out, but it was a fun experience. They're the only two things I really did as a pro player. Um, coaching wise, it's just, yeah, the, the last regional win was the first major, major success point for me personally, uh, and I'm looking forward to more. 
What are your goals as a coach for 2022? Another regional win would be amazing, but the end game for the rest of this season, since there's only one split left, is definitely to make that major. It's grind time now, but it's the off season, so it's gonna be a fun six weeks, I believe, until we get back into the swing of things. And do you have any advice for any of the younger players who are just starting to get into the scene? Uh, just keep grinding. There's a lot more you can do than just play the game. Uh, yes, you can blindly put in hours and mindlessly just grind out ranked, but that'll only do you so far uh, in terms of benefits. So I'd say definitely work on being more efficient with your time on the game if your goal is to get better and compete at that top level. What do you do to relax? And do you play any other games to kind of chill out? Or is Rocket League also a chill out game for you? Uh, Rocket League is a chill out game when I'm playing with people. Uh, so if I'm playing with mates, I can happily play Rocket League and just muck around for hours on end. Uh, if it's just me, my game at the moment's been Teamfight Tactics, the League of Legends mini chess game. That's definitely been my go-to. It's been my Rocket League and yeah, TFT have been the only two games I've touched for about a year now. Uh, other than that, it's just gym and just chilling out with family, watching shows, movies, just mentally resetting whenever I can around work. Um, now, in my opinion, Rocket League is an absolutely hilarious game. Uh, when I compare when I compare it to other games that are prominent in the esports scene, such as League of Legends or shooting games like COD, Rocket League seems almost like comical. So my question is: Is it hard to keep a serious face during a Rocket League tournament? And how common is like rage and rage quitting? Rage quitting in terms of at the top levels not very high. Uh, the rage is always there. It's like any other esport, the rage comes and goes. It Obviously, you, you're playing at that top level, you get hyper-analytical of everything, and the rage just kind of comes in. It's You're playing at that top level, you expect the top level from everyone. It's just something you get used to, and if you don't get that, it's the same rage. You get it at yourself, teammates, opposition, whatever. The rage is there. Um, yes, it can be just as fun to play, but it's a five-minute game at the top level. It's five minutes of non-stop, intense, pumping out as much as you can to get the win. It can be fun, but at that top level, you've got five minutes of just constant mentally engaged gameplay. There's no break, there's no sit down, there's no laugh it off, it's just constantly going. And yes, you do have those moments where you laugh mid-game, you get mad mid-game. I'd say it's no different to any other esport personally, but I can see why people looking in from the outside can see it as that kind of more archaic game almost. My personal opinion on Rocket League, as I was thinking about it, uh, Rocket League could be the epitome of video games. And let me explain that. So video games started out as something fun and entertaining, like it's it's in the title, video games. Um, then as the internet and computers became more widespread, video games started becoming social. So Rocket League, it's a team game with a shared goal of getting the ball into the goal. Um, all while these cars are like doing flips and driving up walls, which makes for just such good entertainment to watch. Um, you have fun, you have the camaraderie. Is Rocket League the perfect game? For me, Rocket League is definitely one of those games where you can play it with anyone, any age, like any person can jump on uh, Rocket League and just have fun. It's been that family friendly game. I've had family friends come over on the Xbox out in the family room and I just turn on Rocket League and leave them to play. You're watching four or five year olds play with two year olds, play with 12 year olds, play with mid 25 year olds, like everyone can play it. And it's one of those very unique games where you don't have to be a certain age to get used to it. You can enjoy it. Just driving the car alone entertains the young ones. And then obviously the older people can grind out and get to that top level like we see in RLCS. So I'd definitely argue the point that it is that A tier family friendly game overall. It's just a matter of growth in my opinion, which has been steady. It's still not there yet though. Cool, thank you so much for joining us today, Vive. Uh, please tell us how people can keep up with you and how can they follow you on social media? The biggest social media is definitely Twitter, uh, Vive OCE on Twitter. Uh, otherwise, team uh, the kids of coaching. Uh, Misty and Fiber are also all over the place on Twitter, so keep an eye on them. Cool, thank you so much, Five, and best of luck with your career as a coach. Awesome, thank you.